In the hour when the King Messiah comes, he shall stand on the roof of the temple and proclaim that the time of deliverance has come. Those who believe and are faithful to God will rejoice in the light that will rise upon them. As it is written, arise, shine, for thy light is come. Only take courage and be careful to observe all things written in the law of Moses. Amen. And turn not aside from them, neither to the right hand nor to the left. Pay care only of this in all diligence that thou love the Lord thy God. Amen. Amen. Blessed art thou, o Lord our God, King of the universe. May your name be blessed among men as it is blessed in the immensity of the heavens. Blessed art thou, O God, Lord of the universe, who consecrated the Sabbath command. and all of Israel's celebrations. Amen. May the Lord bless and preserve you. May he let his face shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance and give you peace. Amen. Come to my house, Rabbi, this afternoon. I promise my children. Thank you. Uh, Joseph. Ah, uh, Joseph, Joseph. There's, Joseph, there's something I want to talk to you about. It's, it's uh, very important. Uh, See, if you just come with me, we can talk about it together. <laughs> the scriptures are quite clear. Yes. Yeah. Yes, David, tell your mother and father you can come and see me tomorrow. Once you've mastered the craft, you will be free. Always remember, only those who know how to use their hands are free. Only they are not dependent on anyone else. Joseph, could we please... Anna. I shall leave you to work on your own for a minute. Yes, yes. No. No, that's okay, the way you should Remember, don't force the wood. Treat it gently. Yes, of course. Now you must take it flat. That's very important. I said say that. Anna, I intended to find you when we finished work. But I'll come with you now. You know that my husband... God rest him, best of men. ...was very fond of you. He would have come to you himself. But in the end... He could hardly speak. Poor man. What sleep he could get was disturbed by dreams about his daughter. Alone, without a brother, no man in the house. And now I can't sleep. And when I die, as I must soon... Why do you say that? I have a feeling that I will not live much longer. You have years ahead of you, and you can sleep soundly tonight. It's a great change in a man's life. But I also know a single man is only half a person. <laughs> As for the contract and the date of the wedding, I leave all that to you and the rabbi. Oh, thank you, Joseph. You won't regret it. Mary's a good girl. She'll make you a beautiful wife. Shall we sign the contract the first day of the full moon? And then, after a year's betrothal, celebrate the wedding in the season of the harvest. When the earth yields up its fruit and every heart rejoices, with luck, I may live to see it.
<laughs> Do not be afraid. Yes, yes, yes. May this betrothal, one to the other, Joseph, Mary, be blessed and sanctified according to the law of Moses and of Israel. Amen. How can that be? No man has ever touched me. Mary, who are you talking to? This news of Elizabeth. My cousin Elizabeth? What news? She's going to have a son in three months' time. She conceived the child six months ago, on the 19th day of Tishri. But Elizabeth was always barren. Now she's far too old. What nonsense is this child? Oh, but it's true. She's going to have a son. And I must go and visit her.
since I came to these parts of the empire, I've been wondering at the countless religious beliefs of these nations. The Egyptians, the Syrians, King Herod, uh, to revert to the Jews, I wonder, um, is it because, as you say, they identify future with past, that they have so many prophets? Oh, the prophets, it's the sun which breeds them. <laughs> <laughs> many of these are harmless, they preach religion, we, we let them go, but some of them preach rebellion because it is written. Altogether, literacy has had a disastrous effect in this country, <laughs> and those we eliminate... Rome has taught us that although this may be indifferent theology, it is very good government. <laughs> <laughs> Majesty, I've heard the word Messiah. What exactly is a Messiah? Oh, even you have heard that awful word, Proclamus. Is he a prophet or is he something even... Well, Rome, even Rome, cannot influence men's dreams. And the Messiah is a bad dream, disguised as a solution to every problem. It's a leveler of scores, a rewarder of righteousness, a scourge for the wrongdoer. It is uh, the bringer of everlasting peace. <laughs> that is, I understand from what you have said, a Messiah is worse than a prophet uh, from the Roman point of view. Oh, from the Jewish viewpoint, too. Only you try telling that to the Jews. No, don't, don't. It's much wiser not to consult them. Just when a Messiah appears, crush it underfoot like a young scorpion. <laughs> <laughs> now you can tell great Augustus that he can rest in peace in Rome. There will be no Messiahs, true or false, in Palestine while I am alive. Come, Mary. We'll be comfortable. Here we go. May the Lord keep us safe on our journey. God bless you, child. Esther, yes, take us to my sister in Bethany and tell her, tell her I'll be with her for Passover. All right, yes, I'm with And go safely yes. on your journey. How did you know? Who told you? A messenger from God. And he told me another thing. A thing even more wonderful. You're blessed among women and blessed shall be the fruit of your womb. I too am highly favored that the mother of the chosen should come to me. From the moment your greeting reached my ears, the child in my womb leapt for joy. My soul doth magnify the Lord. And my spirit hath rejoiced in God, my Saviour, for he has looked kindly upon the most humble of his handmaidens, and he has told me that all generations shall call me blessed. He who is mighty has done unto me a mighty thing.
Is it true about Mary's dream? Oh, yes, it's true. News came from Anne Karim. Elizabeth is going to have a child. Even though she's past the age? Oh, yes, Elizabeth and she must be nearly 50. Zacharias? Yes, that's the one. She's Mary's ah. cousin. It can't be true. Well, Joseph! Are we going to get an invitation to your wedding? <laughs> Plenty of time for that, Jotham. The contract's only just been signed. Only just betrothed and his beloved's left him already. <laughs> just like her, she's always been a bit strange. Not like the others. That's something you'll have to learn to live with. Uh, but seriously, Joseph, Mary is remarkable. We all think so. A remarkable girl. Blessed be thou, our Lord, King of the universe, who has blessed us with your commandments and ordained us to initiate our sons in the covenant of our father Abraham. Amen. As this child enters the covenant, so may he enter into the study of the Torah, into marriage, and into good deeds. Amen. Amen. This is the seal in flesh of the covenant between the Lord and his people. What is the name of the child? His name is... His name shall be John. When you get back to Nazareth, tell Joseph what you have seen and heard, what you know. The Lord God gives life where no life is possible. And one life shall be the Son of God, and the other shall be his prophet. Go, tell all this to Joseph. <coughs> Will he believe me? Will he believe me? God will open his heart. That's too much for any man to believe. But you're not any man. You too are chosen. I'm sick at heart. You are to be my wife. But now the vow has to be broken. I swear I've never been with her. What I said about Elizabeth was true. Don't worry. I believe in you. God's will be done. Now are you sure, huh? She told me herself. Women are the loveliest and brightest of God's creations. Thank you, O Lord, that you made me a man. Please, I need your advice. Oh, what advice can I give? 
This is all. Uh, Rabbi. It is written in the law, if in the time of betrothal a woman sins with any other man, let them both be taken beyond the gates of the town and stoned to death, for the abomination may be crushed out of the heart of Israel. Should a man marry a woman and she find no favor in his eyes, because she has found in her the stain of uncleanliness, let him write a bill of repudiation and deliver it into her hands. This law applies even if I haven't taken Mary into my house? Yes. Yes, all that is needed is for a bill to be written and delivered in the presence of two witnesses. No. If I do that, I will expose her shame. I can't. I can't. I'll send her away if I must. But in secret. God knoweth the secret of the heart. Trust in him and accept. Accept it, Joseph. The Lord will not abandon you. Thank you. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. It is by the Holy Spirit that she has conceived. She will bear a son, and you shall give him the name Jesus, the Savior.
With this ring. With this ring. Be thou consecrated unto me. Be thou consecrated unto me. According to the law of Moses and of Israel. According to the law of Moses and of Israel. May the Lord bless and preserve you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance towards you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Your Majesty, we have always treated your country, as far as possible, as a free and independent nation. But the governor of Syria has decided to include Palestine in a census. In that event... A census in my territories? In Galilee, Judea, Ithuria? Whatever your motives for this, they'll be misunderstood. People will be uh, resentful, suspicious, perhaps, uh, perhaps even hostile. As Consul, I am here merely to carry out instructions. My dear Consul, there seems to be one aspect of the problem of which either Rome or you are entirely ignorant, and I cannot believe it to be Rome. The methods which you propose for your, your census are contrary to our tradition. Tradition? Uh, permit me, Your Majesty. I do not think that Marcus Nasso is aware of the tradition Your Majesty refers oh. to. For such official purposes as the taking of a census, every person living in these territories considers himself as belonging not to the place where he actually lives, but to the place of origin of his family group, his tribe. May I say tribe? You may say tribe. A census, therefore, means the movement of every person back to what he considers to be his native township ancestral capital to dignify a place which is sometimes no more than a stinking dunghill oh uh, you choose your phrases most exquisitely caius uh, uh, <laughs> so if the census were conducted according to uh, local tradition you think your subjects would accept it more readily oh i see now we're supposed to count ourselves under your supervision I hope starting with the king. That is not oh, what I seriously, think. seriously, have you any idea what this would entail? The shifting of entire populations, the disruption of trade. The divine oh. Augustus is counting on your understanding, your majesty. I hope I shall not have to inform him of any lack of cooperation. Thank the divine Augustus for his uh, unswerving Benevolence. Yeah. Census. It's a trick to increase the taxes. And we all know where the money ends up. In the Rome. But why should it? What does Rome give us? That's not the point. The Romans want to count us. How many we are. Where we are. They want us to know that they are our rulers. But we should have no earthly ruler. No rule but the Lord. No king, but God. It's not for you to remind us of the scriptures. Be quiet and go home. I apologize for my son. He's too young to understand. What are you doing to the faith of our fathers? All over Galilee, there are thousands of Jews preparing for, for what you're always talking about in there, the coming of the king who will liberate us. 
Come! But what are you doing about it? Nothing! We accept the violence of the Romans come like home sheep! with me! We are not worthy of the Stop king to that. come! Stop The king to come will not bring violence and bloodshed. Huh? It is written. He himself is pure from sin. God shall cause him to be mighty through the spirit of holiness. And wise through the counsel of understanding. Now come home. Stay there till you learn more respect for your elders. So even Augustus obeys God. Uh, uh, the prophecy? Yes, the prophecy. For thou, O Bethlehem, art in no wise the least of cities. For from thee shall come forth a shepherd of my people, Israel. If only I could come with you. If only I... Joseph, you need help when he's born. Don't be troubled, Anna. He will be well cared for. Everything will be done as God ordered.
seem to be kings, Lord Melchior, from different lands. I told you we could not have been the only ones to see the sign. Come in peace. Where are you bound? Wherever I am led. I follow that star. I'm sure that Herod keeps a strict watch on his frontiers. He must know that we have crossed them. I would have to tell him, as Balthazar has said, that I follow that star wherever it leads. But what will we find? All my calculations show that there was to be a new heavenly creature, a new star. It was even precise as to place and time. So I made up my mind to set forth and seek what they would unfold. You did not know? Only that it would be something wonderful. The stars are not distant and aloof, cut off from the lives of men. The rising of a new star entails an immense labor in the heavens that always has its counterpart on Earth. The universe is about to bring forth a prodigy beyond our understanding. Your star. My brother, Balthazar, is indeed a sign of wonder. The divine Zoroaster says the next prophet will show himself in a foreign land, and the truth he will reveal will be at first only for his own people. But there is only one truth. And only one God. All the rest are vain, or parts of him. The people of Israel know this. Many of their wise men have been close to him. And their writings confirm my calculations. A king is about to be born. A king? A king who will free us from the evils of this world. Where will he be born? The sacred writings point to a small town in Judea called Bethlehem Ephrata. Excuse me, may I speak with you? What do you want? I desperately need a place for tonight. Huh? My wife is near her time. No, no, and I it's... can't help you. I already have too many people. But I've got... Can't you see? Come on! Close the door! How many times must I tell you that the gate should be shut?
Nothing. But there must be another place. I'll try again. How do you feel? I don't like leaving you alone. Do you think you could walk a little further? Hold on to me. Oh, no. No. Stay there. Stay there. No. God will help us. Listen, it's no use trailing around Bethlehem anymore. Every inn is full up. None of them are going to take your wife in like that. Come, I'll show you. Take your donkey. That's right. Now, do what I tell you. If you go through that gate over there, just outside the walls, on the road to Jerusalem, you'll come to some... Careful. You'll come to some stables. Some caves. It's not much, I know, but it'll be warm and dry and plenty of fresh straw. Hmm? Look, they're down there. Can you see? Right. Now then, if I can manage it, I'll come back later and help. Oh, and if anyone tries to throw you out, just say that Abigail sent you. Abigail. Remember the name. We'll remember. Thank you. Beautiful child. Come and put him there in the manger and see if there's some fresh straw that'll keep him warm. I'll take care of her, poor girl.
Now then. Have you some water? Give it to me. Come, that's it. Who's that? What do you want? This is no place for you. Get out. Get out, you hear me? Off, off with you. Can't you see? Poor girl just had a child. That's why we come. We were told to. Told? By who? We were out there in the fields. This man came to us from nowhere. An angel. Shepherds, he said. They say that Israel is a scattered flock that lacks a shepherd. And then he said, tonight the shepherd is born. It is for you that he comes, he said. For the poor. That's why you came here? Yes. The man said... He said... The man said... Today, in the city of David, a savior has been born for you. Glory to God in the highest, he said, and peace on earth for those whom he loves. Come. Across my border, yet not one of them sends a greeting. Are they armed? Not heavily, Your Majesty. Our spies say they're equipped to travel fast and far. But they were not heading here. If not here, where? It was Bethlehem, Your Majesty. They, they, they followed a star, the new star. Bethlehem? O oh, thou Bethlehem Ephrata, thou art the smallest... What was that phrase again? Thou Bethlehem Ephrata, art a little one amongst the thousands of Judah. Out of thee he shall come forth unto me, who is to be the ruler in Israel. And his going forth is from the beginning from the days of eternity. A ruler in Israel? Have those travelers watched all the time? And bring me the names of all newborn children in Bethlehem. shall shine upon you.
Come, come, come. I promise. Everything will be done the way we'll we agreed. Don't worry. I promise. Come, come. Bullshit. The Lord said to Abraham, Keep my alliance and circumcise each child born unto Israel on the eighth day of his life. Amen. Amen. This is the seal in flesh of the covenant between the Lord and his people. And the child shall be called His name shall be Jesus. And the nations of the world shall march towards... Huh? Where is he? Now I can die contented, Lord. According to thy word. I am Simeon, an old man who has waited long to see his salvation. And now my eyes have seen the child who will bring the salvation thou hast prepared before all people, a light of revelation to the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people, Israel. And a sword shall pierce your heart. What's your name? Joffred Pa Elias. Uh-huh. Where from? Uh, Escalon. Don't right. forget to take your token. You? One for each of the family. What's your name? Abdias Abdi. How many children? Seven. This is the youngest. How old is she? Three. Move on. And here are seven tokens. My husband could not come. He's ill. What can I do? I'll give you one for him, too, if you explain. Are these tokens? The coin they give to prove that you registered. Yeah, they're little tokens with oh. the Emperor's head on. Oh. How many in the family? My wife oh, my over there. Make your mark. Special orders. We want the names of all the newborn. Newborn? Note their names. The newborn. What did he say? He wants the names of all the newborn. Why do they want to know about the newborn? No point in arguing with them. You just do what you're told.
don't be afraid. Where is the child? We have come a long way to greet him. This is the king of Israel, who will take away the sins of the world. I did not know where we were to find you. And coming here, a stable. I thought my brothers were mistaken. But now I see the justice of it. There could be no other place. Hmm. Not in glory, but in humility. Accept these poor tokens of our homage. Incense to perfume the halls of the mighty. Gold for kingly rule. Myrrh, the most precious herb of the East. And the most bitter. And now, a word of warning. Leave here as soon as you can. Herod soldiers have followed us, hoping we'll lead them to you. He knows of this birth. He'll seek out the child to kill him. Go into Egypt. It may not be for long. Herod's days are numbered. Those travelers crossed my frontier again. I see your majesty. Yes, your majesty. The child must still be here. Kill every male child up to one year old. Uh, two years old. Better the innocent should die than that the guilty should escape. Guilty? Your Majesty, a child? Guilty in the womb! Guilty in the stars! I'll bring down their stars! I'll snuff them out in blood! This is my world! I will not share it with an infant! There's no room for two kings here! Like a newborn scorpion! And a fuck! You know the mark of a real king? Courage, even in the face of Jewish prophecy, bits of old parchment, old blind men. Ha! Now go to Bethlehem and make history. Kill. But your majesty. Kill. Kill them all. Kill. Kill them all.
thus is fulfilled that which was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah. In Rama was there a voice heard, lamentation, weeping, and great mourning. Rachel, weeping for her children, and would not be comforted, because they were no more. Taken in the midst of his sins, struck down by the Lord to whom the power and pride of kings are as nothing. Who cannot defy God, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Yet the yoke of tyranny will not be lifted from us. Rome will choose a king from among his sons and her grip will become stronger. But you should lift up your hearts, for the Eternal will not abandon us. He will send us a deliverer. And his dominion is the everlasting dominion that shall not pass away. And his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed. See? Nazareth. That's where we live. Hear, O Israel. The Eternal our God, the Eternal is one. Blessed be the name of the glory of the kingdom forever and ever. And thou shalt love the Eternal thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee shall be in thine heart. Amen. Amen. A man skillful in his work will stand before kings. And our work, like every other, has a second meaning in God's eyes. We use this to make a straight line on the wood before we cut it. And as we use a ruler to make straight lines, God gave us rules to keep our lives straight.
God gives the wood. And man, with his skill and invention that God gave him, is always finding new uses. Sometimes wonderful uses for it. A wheel, a plow, a ladder. They all look simple, but they are from God. And a ladder can sometimes reach from earth to heaven. Joseph! Joseph, didn't you say the plow would be ready? Coming! Keep on with your work. What is this? Well, look at it. What have you done? This is not how I asked you to make it. Oh, no, no, it is not the same as before. It was supposed to be ready days ago, and now it is not right. given us the Torah, the Lord God will go before you. Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid, for the Lord thy God will go with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Now you're truly a man. <laughs> Jesus Bar Joseph, as a new adult member of our community, you have exercised your right to read and comment upon the scriptures. That is your heritage. It is the heritage of the children of Israel. But Remember that God's word is spoken in times of light and in times of darkness and persecution. May you always read from the law in a time of joy. Amen. <laughs> May God protect you. May God bring blessings on the board. <laughs> The Roman soldiers are here. The Romans. Jewish bread, better than nothing. Who wants this? 
quartermaster, an army must eat, and it's a long way from Damascus to Jerusalem. Yeah, but Galilee isn't Roman territory. <laughs> the whole world is Roman territory. Hey, put your sword back. Ignore them. You'll meet with plenty of those in Jerusalem. They're called zealots. They're mad religious fanatics. You there, remember this. The Roman army is not a pack of bandits. And we'll deal with the likes of you in our own good time. Come. May the curse of God fall upon these murders! How long must we wait, O oh Lord, for you to help us? God has abandoned us. How long? this house that I have built. Yet attend to the prayer and supplication of thy servant, O Lord, that thine eyes may always be upon this house, day and night, this place of which thou didst say, it shall receive my name. Son, we've been looking for you everywhere. 
Why were you looking for me everywhere? Did you not know you would have found me in my father's house? How long, oh Lord? I go old. What have I promised to the prophets? Where are they? Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and tell her that her time of bondage has ended, that her penalty is paid, salvation is at hand to be shouted from the mountaintops. Comfort ye. Comfort, God, comfort. The teaching is clear. Behold, I send my messenger, and he will clear the way before me. A messenger before me. A messenger. And the Lord will suddenly come to his temple and the messenger of the covenant, behold, is here. The people of Galilee thought that they had seen the depths of iniquity when their land was ruled by Herod, the man of blood. Yet now his son and heir, Herod Antipas, the new prince of Galilee, strives to outdo his father's crimes. For he follows his lusts and breaks faith with God. He dares to defy the Lord of Moses by entering into unholy marriage with the wife of his brother. If we permit this, all of us will suffer for his sins. Majesty, he's here, the Baptist. He's here. Well? Well, well what? <laughs> well, uh, leave him alone. Oh, no. I'm out again, continue. Oh, what harm can he do? been out there for years in the desert, living on locusts and, 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 and prayers. He doesn't incite the people to rebellion. He asks nothing for himself. All he wants is to remain poor and naked. You'd very much like everybody else to do the same. Oh, no. When the wedding festivities are over, I'll have him preach at the palace. You can hear him with your own ears. He's a very remarkable man. I'm glad there is somebody remarkable in Judea. Herod! Herod! The tablets of the law speak plainly. You may marry the wife of your brother when your brother is dead, but not while he lives. This woman, Herodias, is the wife of your brother, Philip, and Philip lives tetrarch in Iturea. It is written, I have seen thine adulteries and thine abominations. Woe unto them! Wilt thou not be made clean? Send back this woman to your brother. Repent! How can you allow this slander to continue? No, no, no. We decided to be clement on our wedding day. I'm not afraid of your power on earth, Herod Antipas. If I do not warn you, you will die in sin, and the Lord will ask me to account for your life. Quickly, into the palace! Repent! Repent! The Lord blesses you, for the kingdom of heaven 
is at hand! Brothers, we can make use of this man. His attacks on Herod and Tiphys excite people. He makes them think about Israel. Don't be too sure about it. Prophets only make men think about God in heaven. So do we. And if we want to direct people's thoughts, we must use what means we can. Yes, but we zealots want to see the power of God on earth fighting the Romans. Does John want that? The time has come. The great and terrible day of the Lord is at hand. Repent and change your lives. Every valley shall be exalted. Every mountain and hill laid low. The winding ways shall be straightened and the rough ways made smooth. God led you back from Babylon to serve him, but you have betrayed him. Now you're warned, flee, flee. <laughs> And you, too, have not ceased to be sons of Jacob. From the days of your forefathers, you have been wayward and have not kept my laws. If you will return to me, I will return to you, says the Lord. Do not think you will be saved by your rituals, by going to the temple. It is not sacrifices the Lord demands. Bring no more vain offerings, saith the Lord. I delight not in the blood of bullocks and of lambs. The sacrifice God demands is a repentant heart. What do we do then to be saved? Change your hearts. Take the right way. The Lord saith, my ways are not your ways. Why speak as though none of us know the way to salvation? We know the law as well as you, and we try to obey it. We are the sons of Abraham. We have always kept the law. To those of you that deem themselves just and pious, I say that you must bring the fruits of repentance. Do not content yourself with saying, Abraham was our father, and that is enough to save us. The Lord could take any one of these stones and turn it into a son of Abraham. Pharisees, we know you. Go back to Jerusalem. Yes, go back to Jerusalem. He's right. John, 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 and ready God for the me. coming of save. the kingdom. Open you up your hearts me, to John. God. I am just a sinner. Receive Please, this cleansing save life. Save me, save me, John. I have sinned. Have mercy on me, I repent. I am a sinner. Let this water wash away your save sins. Me, John. Disgrace of Israel! Go back to your husband! Go back! John, you'll pay for it! You'll pay for it! Aren't you? No. Yes, yes, admitted you are tired of me. 
can tell by the way. By the way, you moon over my daughter. Over son. Nonsense. You like her. Oh. She's a child. She's a big. Liar! I am no! Coward! I am not a coward! Prove it then! Arrest the prophet. I demand that you arrest him. Demand? Demand? That's a strong word, my heart. You must remember. John is right. By the laws of Moses, we have sinned. Come on, come on. <laughs> we have sinned. And we go on sinning. And very pleasant it is too. <laughs> Even if I wanted to, I could do nothing about his reproaches until he once more sets foot in Galilee. And then, my own, my heart, will throw him into prison. <laughs> <laughs> repent, repent, <laughs> repent. <laughs> A little repenting won't do him any harm, eh? After all, he preaches it. <laughs> Rabbi! We have been sent by the Sanhedrin of Jerusalem, amongst whom you have many friends and admirers. They understood why you could not come to the temple. It would have been wrong for you to abandon your mission even for a single day. The reason for the invitation was to ask you one simple question. Who are you? First, I will say, who I am not. I am not the Messiah. The Messiah is yet to come. Then in the name of the living God, who are you? I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. If you are not the Messiah or the prophet Elijah, by whose authority do you baptize? By the authority of him who shall come after me, whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And with fire, his rod is in his hand, and with it, he will cleanse the threshing floor. Jesus, 
We have always known it was not for us that Jesus came to us. If only I could have stayed a little longer. God's will be done. Out of my distress, I cried to the Lord, and he answered me. I cried, and he heard my voice. I went down into the cities underneath the earth, to the peoples of the past. But he lifted my life from the grave. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God, the Lord is one. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Forgive you if you truly mean it in your heart. Open up your heart. Be ready for the coming of the kingdom. Let your heart now be cleansed. Forgive me. I have sinned. Help me to be strong. Be strong. baptism from you. And yet you come to me. Let it be so. We must fulfill all righteousness. Eternal Father, I hear your voice. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased.
pours his blessings on you. The Lord rejoices in repentant hearts. This water cleanses. Andrew, Philip, behold the Lamb of God who takes unto himself the sins of the world. It is him you must follow now, not me. He must increase, as I must decrease. He went straight to the synagogue. I saw him. He's back. And now, our reading from the prophets. The prophet Isaiah. Now, who, is, who is our reader? Oh, yes. My son, today, Rabbi. Uh, <coughs> Joseph's son? Yes. Joseph the carpenter. The carpenter. God rest his soul. <coughs> the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to give good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, to give sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Today, in your hearing, the scriptures are fulfilled. The scriptures are fulfilled. Can he say fulfilled? But how can he dare to say such a thing? What do you mean? The prophecy you have read can only be fulfilled by the coming of the Messiah. Yes. Right. By the coming of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God comes not in a way foreseen by men. Repent and believe the good news. The kingdom of heaven. Behold. 
is suddenly upon you. What? <laughs> Rabbi, take the scriptures away from him. He is a blasphemer. He defiles them by touching them. He shouldn't touch them with his unclean hands. <laughs> I've heard things about you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. A prophet is never accepted in his own country. Who do you think you are? John, the prophet? You should be thrown out of this holy place. Get out of here. Blasphema? Blessed is he who is not ashamed of me. Take this man out of here. Don't let him touch the holy scriptures. Clear him out, Rabbi. Today, in our hearing, the scriptures are fulfilled. What, what's happening inside the synagogue? Let's go and see. They're making an awful noise. You must stop them. You cannot let this happen. Rabbi, they don't understand who this man is. Andrew. There is no place for him here. He is unworthy. Rabbi, this man is not Messiah. Run him out. Run away. No way. Never come back to Lazarus. Don't let him go. We were told to make ourselves known to you. I am Andrew of Capernaum, a fisherman by trade. But your follower now, if you'll take me. This is Philip. We were sent by John the prophet, the Baptist. He has just been imprisoned by King Herod Antipas. Andrew. Philip. Come with me. <gasps> Come on. Come on. Tell me. When was John arrested? As soon as he returned to Galilee. He had to return. Too many people were waiting for him on the Jordan. There it is. The Sea of Galilee. And Capernaum, where I was born. It's a town of fishermen. But it also has the greatest synagogue in Israel. You can stay at my brother's house. He's a good man. commandments God gave to Moses so long ago must not remain dead stone for the reverence of unthinking minds. Dead stone? The tablets of the law? Dead stone? What do you mean, Rabbi? Stone is what the law is written on. For the law itself is alive. And living things are constantly changing. But our law is eternal. You Don't cannot you change, change the law of Moses. No. That's right, the law is here. A man is made of flesh and blood. And he changes. Doesn't he remain the same man? God wants to write the law on your hearts. Rabbi, you said you have come here to give us the good news. 
Is this it? The good news? That the law is living like a man? The good news I bring you is this. Your captivity is over. And what does that mean, our captivity is over? What captivity? Captivity in sin. God fulfills the promise he made to our people Israel and reconciles himself to man. God is coming to you. To all of you. Even the most wretched. Do not shut the door in his face. Demon has always tried to throw him into fire and into water to destroy him. If you could do anything, have mercy. Help my poor thing. Praise be the Lord. Yes, we're all fishermen in our family. Andrew here knows us well. But I was sent off to learn. All you were fit for, perhaps. And what have you learned? Oh, that two and two make four, sometimes. That most people seem to be here to be pushed about. That getting on is a fine thing. That birth is the beginning of death. But there must be something more for man between birth and death. Today, when I heard you preaching, I began to understand, and it gave me hope. Through your words, the old scriptures seem to become alive. That's what we want. We want the law to be alive, written in our hearts, not carved in stone.
What is your name? John. Son of Zebedee. John. Stay with us. Back! Back! He's back, you idiot! Why to let us... That's my brother now, Simon Peter. And there's my brother, James. He's shouting again, angry as usual. If anyone's drunk, it's you, you sponge! He doesn't mean it. He's a good man. What's the matter, brother? Poor catch! Poor catch! Nothing. The only things we catch these days are Roman taxes. And while we're out sweating, working our hands raw on the nets, the sticky tax gatherers take half and give it to the Romans. Blood suckers. Go, brother. Go and tell that leech, that two-faced tax collector of ours, Matthew, that if he wants more money out of me, to put some fish in the lake. Simon, this is the man I told you about. The man John spoke of. John the Baptist. What? Another holy man? Are you another of those that tell us to be patient and promise us better times will be ahead? What about now? What about our children? Who will fill their bellies? A lot of talk these days while we all starve. Find a holy man who can put an end to that. Then maybe I'll listen. Go out again. I shall come with you. We've just pulled in! Get the nets off the boat! Please, Simon, do as he says. Why do you always listen to these people? Who knows the life better than Simon. I? Please! Please! Cast off. We're going out again. Come on, I knew he'd do it. Come on, me. Come on, John. Help me out! 
fishing for four years, and I've never seen a catch so big. More. We could feed the whole winter. So, there were miracles, were there? And a big catch, inspired by a prophet. What's his name? Jesus, get out. He's staying with Simon Peter. You know him, the fisherman? Yes. He owes me back taxes, doesn't he? Move! Yes, yes. I've never been there, but my father says. Well, well, well. Well, if there's been a big catch, he can pay, can't he? The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. A man finds it, and in his joy spends everything he has to buy that field. It's like a merchant in search of fine pearls. He finds one pearl of great value and sells everything to have that pearl. You, you're all fishermen. Well, the kingdom of heaven is like a net, a great net thrown into the sea. Suddenly it is filled. It's almost bursting. You have to call to the other boats to come and help. Everybody's working together, happy, excited. It's a time for joy for rejoicing in what God has freely given. But one day, God will ask you to account for the gift he has given. Be prepared. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Rabbi! You say the kingdom of heaven is at hand, but when exactly will it come? When you see the clouds moving from the east, you say the rain is coming, and so it is. When the desert wind blows, you say it'll be hot, and it is. All of you can read the signs of the earth and the sky. How is it? You can't read the signs of the times. The kingdom of heaven is here. Now. What's he doing here? It's Matthew, the tax collector. Get him out. Peter, your friend, Matthew is here. Get out. You're defiling this house. Blood-sucking tax collector. No place for you here. Out of my house! You stop! Tell Who, Simon? Don't! I will not have Simon. a defile by you! Simon! I hear you've had a big catch, Simon. We'll talk about it later, shall we? But what about this friend of yours? This new preacher or teacher or whatever he is? Am I not allowed to speak with him? Not in my house. You seem to be most unwelcome here. I don't know your name. But I know what you do. Levi. Or Matthew. I'm known by both names. And by others. <laughs> I see you and I must meet in a place where both of us are welcome. Is your own house far? Why do you ask? I should like to have supper with you tonight. You would enter the house of a sinner. I would enter any house where I am welcome. What are you doing? Be 
careful, this is my property! No! No, you mustn't! Put it down! Watch his hand! Help me. I've been this way for 20 years. It is the curse of God. Punishment for my sins and for my parents' sins. Your sins are forgiven you. Rabbi, you must not speak so. That's blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. Which of these is easier? To say your sins are forgiven you. Or rise up and walk home. The Son of Man has the power to forgive sins. and walk home. He doesn't seem to realize the scandal it will cause. Peter, you tell him. I've told him. Well, tell him again. The whole place is talking about it. Meaning some Pharisees, I suppose. Well, they know the law. Tax collectors cannot even enter the synagogue, and anyone who associates with them is as defiled as them. Yes, according to the Pharisees. Well, yes. Well, that's their argument. Peter, tell him I've again. I've told him! What do you want from me? I said Matthew's my blood-sucking enemy. I hate Matthew, but all Jesus would say is, well, well why don't you join us as well? Andrew. Andrew, I'm not like you. I'm not a follower of priests and prophets. I'm a fisherman. I have my family to think of. You follow the Baptist? Now follow this one. Peter! Just leave me alone! Why did you bring him here to me? This was my life! <laughs> my nets? My boats. Go on! Follow him! Believe me! Come on. You can't talk to him when he's like this. Come on, Philip. This is where I belong. Master! It's a scandal for you to eat with these people. Don't you know who they are? We've lived our lives honorably, made sacrifices to keep the law. They are thieves, whores, usurers, violent and godless people. 
And now you sit and eat with such people who spend their lives in orgies and perversions. I'm not come to call the virtuous to repentance, but the sinners. And they might enter the kingdom of heaven even before you. Listen, master, if you go and eat with these people, they will contaminate you. The whole town will abandon you. Oh, James is right. James. The heart of the law is mercy. You can't! You can't! Peace be with you. Thank you for coming to my house. Rabbi, you are welcome. Welcome, Rabbi. No, 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 don't move, I'll sit down. Why? This is my brother James. He's in the same business as I am. I drink to you in the name of all here. Rabbi, we want to hear your words. Please, speak to us. No, 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 let's speak first. No, let him decide. No, no. I'd like to tell you a story. Sit down, sit down. A certain man had two sons. And one day the younger of these sons said to his father, Give me my share of your estate now. So his father divided his wealth between his two sons. And a few days later, this younger son set off for a distant land. And there he squandered all the money he had on riotous living. Now, not long after this, a great famine swept over the land. And the boy began to starve. He persuaded a farmer to hire him to feed his pigs. But he was so hungry that even the husks he was feeding the swine began to look good to him. And still, nobody gave him anything. Finally, the boy came to his senses. At home, even my father's servants have enough food and to spare. And here I am starving to death. I will go home and ask my father to hire me as one of his servants. And so he set off. Now he was still some distance from his home when his father saw him coming. And he was so filled with compassion that he ran towards his son and embraced him and kissed him. 
the boy said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and you. I am not worthy to be called your son. But his father called for the servants and said, Bring me the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Put rings on his hands and shoes on his feet. Kill the fatted calf. We must celebrate with a feast. My son was dead. And is alive again. Now, the older brother, at this time, was working in the fields. And as he came back to the house, he heard the noise of music and dancing. He called for one of the servants and asked what was happening. And he was told. At this, the older brother became very angry. And he refused to go into the house. The father came out, tried to plead with him, but he wouldn't listen. I have worked for you all this time, all these years, and never once have I disobeyed you. And in all that time, you've never even given me so much as a goat so that I could have a feast with my friends. My younger brother comes back, having spent all your money on harlots. And for him, you kill the fatted calf. Please, said the father. Please, try to understand. You are always with me. Everything I have is yours. But it is right to celebrate. Your brother was dead. And is alive again. He was lost. And is found. Forgive me, Master. I'm... <laughs> Just a stupid man. from me? Is it just a matter of my violating the marriage vows? Is that it? 
because I have a mind to repent that, John? Hmm? Will that satisfy you? Do you think it makes me happy to see you rotting away in the dark down there with that howling gang outside the bar? Why don't you listen to reason? There's work for you here in this wretched kingdom. If it's power you want, you can have power. Power to build, not to break. My task has been to prepare the way for the one who shall wear the crown. Who is this man, this prophet from Galilee? Is he the one I ought to be talking to? Do not fear the toppling of your throne. Before kingdoms change, men must change. Ah, uh, you say that, yes. But I've been listening to those fools outside. What leaders intend and what their followers are after are not one and the same thing. That crowd of yours needs someone to control it. John, if I set you free, what would you do with your freedom? I would follow the one whose way I have prepared. Just like many others who already follow him. But you will not set me free. was wrong. The curse of God is upon us. Release John. Yeah, send him away, send him away. Send him to Egypt, you're right. <laughs> what harm can he do us there? After all. Yes? Tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow, on your birthday. <laughs> What better present could you give to yourself and your people? A great gesture of clemency. <laughs> Once he was free and had gone to Egypt, he just might meet with us some unfortunate accident. <laughs> <laughs> what an imagination, my thing. How fast your thoughts travel. <laughs> imagination? <laughs> You know I can always read your mind. Don't forget, I can read your mind too, my lord. <laughs> Harold. Hmm? What present shall I give you on your birthday? <laughs> what do you think I would like most? 
Salome. You see, I can read your mind. I do not think I have come to bring peace on earth. I have come not to bring peace, but a sword. I have come to sow discord between a man and his father, between a daughter and her mother, a man's enemies. will be members of his own family. You may say we have left our belongings to become your followers. I tell you this, anyone who has left home, or father, mother, wife, children, land, for the kingdom of God, shall be rewarded a hundred times over on earth and inherit the kingdom of God. Whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But if a man will lose his life for my sake and for the gospel I bring you, he will save it. For many that are first will be last. And the last first. So do not store up for yourselves treasure on earth where it grows rusty and moth-eaten and thieves break in to steal it. Store up treasure in heaven, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. My name is Jairus. I am one of the elders of the synagogue here. My little daughter is dying. I beg you, come and lay your hands on her so that she may be cured and live
take me to her. He's arriving. He's coming. He's bringing the man to cover. Master, your daughter is dead. <laughs> <laughs> Do not weep. The child is not dead. Only sleeping. Who are you to come here with your jokes? We've seen that she's dead. You haven't. Peace, Thomas. Peace. Talitha Kumi. Rise, little girl. something to eat. She's alive! She's alive! She's alive! Rabbi, I want to apologize. I didn't know who you were. I, I thought the child was dead. Well, she was dead. I saw her with my own eyes. Can't you believe without seeing, Thomas? Sometimes I do. Sometimes I think I know what I believe, but something happens. My mind gets blurred and I don't know. I doubt so much you must want to be certain. I do. Then follow me. You mean give up my work and... Yes. Jairus, will you give me your servant to be one of my disciples? With gladness, Master. I am happy for him. Do you have doubts about following me, Thomas? No. I don't believe I have. 
Why won't they listen? I told my wife I won't be away for long. In any case, the fishing's hopeless. Why not go away? I told her, I said, I'll come back in the spring. Don't lie to her. And to yourself. Lie? Yes. You know very well. You'll never go back. I will. No, you won't. Never. You'll never fish again. You'll never get drunk again. you'll never live in Capernaum again. None of us will. We'll never be the same. And neither will the lives of everyone in the whole world. We know why, Simon. First, to know.
When I've done, what will you give? Whatever thou shalt ask of me, I will give to thee, unto the half of my kingdom. Princess is going to dance. I want the head of the Baptist. Oh, no. You promised. Oh, no. Yes, you promised. You promised. Yes. Oh, no. You swore, my lord. Before. All your guests. Shall it be said that King Herod does not keep his promises?
asking Herod, you oh. said anything. Yes, you promised. Oh, no. Yes, no. you promised. A king will rule in righteousness, and princes will rule in justice. This way. Then the eyes of those that will not see will not be closed. And their works are in the dark, and they say, Who seeth us? Who knoweth us? Oh, woe unto them! Woe unto them! His head sheared off like a rabbit's and given as a present to a dancing girl. Only by killing him could Herod hope to silence his voice. But I can still hear him. We must avenge him. Revenge? Bad politics, my friend. Suppose we kill Herod. Who will replace him? I'll tell you. Another servant of Tiberius, a Roman procurator like Pontius Pilate. So what should we do then? Submit? Or become soldiers of Rome, like the Syrians or the Greeks? No. The Romans must know they can never rule Galilee with ease. Oh, I know that for the present we strike in the dark. But the time will come when God shall send us our leader, and then we shall make open war. You mean a real war? The people of Israel, alone, against the Roman Empire? Brothers, this is Judas Iscariot. I've asked him to talk to you. You should hear what he has to say about Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth? Do you know him? Oh, I have heard him preach many times. And I have seen the kind of power that he has. Is he the man to place our hopes on? Hmm? Why do you ask me this question? John answered it. Remember what the Baptist said? I bear witness that this is the man. Tell all my friends and disciples to follow him and proclaim in his name the kingdom of heaven. We know that. We know that. But could he be the one, priest and king, who lead our people Israel? Could he be the Messiah promised by our Lord? I believe that if one day the people of Israel do find a Messiah, oh yes, it will be him. But n no, I, I beg of you, let him fulfill his mission. That is my advice. I intend to follow him, and I hope, if he will accept me, become a disciple. Very well, Judas. Will you keep in touch with us, hmm? If you wish. Peace be on you, John. Though your blood cries out for revenge, may your soul find rest in the glory of the righteous. May peace be with you, John. Rest in peace, John. Eternal peace on your soul, John. May your soul find eternal rest. Peace be on you, John. Come on, come on.
Since you came here, noise and filth, the curse of God is on you. <laughs> Don't worry, Mary. They are only boys' games. Ah, oh, boys, they would only burn my house down. The fathers. They're all against me. <laughs> Not all, Mary. There's a friend of yours in town today. I have no friends. Oh, yes, you have. Jesus, the prophet. Friend of our cast, forgiver of sins, hmm? Hey, according to him, the sins of the flesh are nothing compared to the sins of the soul. Hey. A man will always forgive a man, but a woman's sin. <laughs> That's another story. For most people, but not for him. I've never seen anybody like him. Have you seen him often? If you go around on business like me, you can't help seeing him. Turn a corner, cross a square, go into a cavern. There he is. Come on. It's been like that for about a year. You sure you haven't come across him? Oh, I sleep during the daytime, don't I? <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. Well, there are big crowds following him everywhere. Sometimes so big he has to sleep in the field. And he thinks nothing of eating and drinking with thieves and whores. <laughs> Any scum of the earth is good enough for him, eh? One of his disciples, as they call themselves, was a, was a tax collector, this thieving swine. But this Jesus... Well, he says... It's not the righteous that need him, it's the sinners. So you see? Yeah, I've got a friend. Hmm? Uh. What about next week? Oh. Joseph of Arimathea, one of the leading Pharisees in Jerusalem. Which of you, for all his worrying, 
can add one day to his life, one inch to his stature. So don't concern yourself so much with the means of life, what you shall eat and drink, or with your bodies and how they should be clothed. Life is more than clothing. Consider the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or gather into barns, but our Heavenly Father feeds them. Will he not all the more feed you? Are you not worth more than they? Consider the lilies of the field. They do not spin. They do not weave. But not even Solomon in all his glory was so arrayed as one of these. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow thrown into the fire, will he not all the more clothe you, who have so little faith? Therefore, do not ask, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? How shall we dress ourselves? It is only the faithless who set their hearts on these things. You must first seek the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and everything will be added freely unto you. So do not be anxious about tomorrow. Tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Let the day's own trouble be sufficient for the day. <laughs> Extraordinary. But isn't that taking it too far? Huh? Well, surely our religion isn't opposed to honest, hard work. Much of what he says has been said by the prophets, but not like this. I agree with you. But we can't be sure until we meet with him face to face. Why not invite him to eat with us? Hmm. Would he come? I'm sure he would. Such a man must be willing to discuss his ideas with people who are open-minded. Master, what must I do to have eternal life? Go and sell all you have and give it to the poor and you shall have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. Sell everything. Everything I own. Everything my father slaved for. Everything. You cannot serve two masters. God and money. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God.
Master. May I speak with you? What is your name, my son? My name is Judas Iscariot. Well, call me a scholar the state finds useful. I read and write Hebrew, Greek, Latin. I, I translate documents. Well, this has become a country of many tongues. Never beaten copper, nor carved wood, nor caught fish as your men have, but I know your men. My father was a prosperous builder who said, my son must never have calluses on his hands, nor brick dust in his hair. My money must make my son into a scholar. Oh, behold, a scholar who wishes to serve you.
master. We should send these people away. We've got nothing to give them to eat. They should go to the villages where they can find food. There's no need to send them away. You give them something to eat. Oh, there are thousands of them. We cannot feed them. Is there any food left? This is all we have. Five barley loaves and two fish. Put the loaves and the fish in the baskets and give them to the people. Go on. Why are you waiting? Do as he says. I'm sorry, there's only one. That's all we have. But we're starving. What do you mean there's only one? There's plenty. God works in Jesus of Nazareth, doesn't he? Through him, we can cast off our chains. We must revenge the murder of John the Baptist, and we must kill King Herod. <laughs> then what are we waiting for? Listen, brothers. It's been said over and over and over again, a kingdom is at hand. Now, a kingdom needs a king, doesn't it? So now is the time for the people and tribes of Israel to follow Jesus of Nazareth. With him to lead us, we can gather an army. March on Jerusalem! Yes, Daniel. Wait. And at Passover, proclaim the kingdom of heaven on earth! Yes. Yes. Quiet! Quiet, all of you! Now is the time for clear thinking! Not for indulgence in your absurd fantasies, you! You want to kill Herod, and you, you want to march on Jerusalem? You could have your skulls crushed for saying it. On one day, they will. Amos. Amos, we live in obscure times, and you all know that we suffer together. But I would rather die than see Jesus manipulated by men like you. His words speak louder than any of your fake eloquence. And what of his enemies? Hmm? What will defeat his enemies? What will disarm them? Your madness or his mission? Judas. 
You have to take us to meet him. We have to talk to him. So the Baptist was right. Men must change before kingdoms can. Don't stand in our way, Judas. That's my advice. Brothers! Judas won't stop us. I like some of his ideas. Herod must die. That is certain. He must pay in blood for the Baptist. But I agree with Judas. Jesus of Nazareth must be kept out of the picture for the time being. It would be safer not to speak of him now. We shall wait for the Passover in Jerusalem. That's when you bring him to us, Judas. We have our brothers in the temple guards. They shall arrest the Sadducees and force them to declare Jesus King of the Jews. Are we all agreed? Yes. 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 No, Amos. I don't agree. I have listened to all of you. And not one of you has understood what Jesus of Nazareth means. What does his presence on earth mean? Brothers, I am one who, like you, believe that the people of Israel would rise up in the name of the Messiah and break their chains. But I am sure now that Jesus of Nazareth means far more than this. Through him, Israel will be reborn, not by force, but by change within. Simon. Simon, you can't give up the cause. We believed in it all our lives. Simon, choose. I choose to pray for you. And to follow Jesus of Nazareth. If he will accept me. Oh, he will accept you. John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and you said he was possessed by devils. Here I am, drinking and eating freely with you. No doubt you'll say I'm a glutton and a drinker. Friend of the tax collectors and the sinners. <laughs> oh, Rabbi, you do us an injustice. We respect your achievements, and we understand their importance. But to what extent? Are you prepared to accept our laws? We hear that you heal the sick on the Sabbath. Do you want our people not to rest on the Sabbath? If one of you had a sheep that it fell into a pit on the Sabbath day, wouldn't you go and get it out? But God made the Sabbath for man, not man for the Sabbath. Oh, oh, we understand that. We understand what you're trying to say. But is it not confusing to the other people? We live by the law. If we accept the law to be ruled by exceptions, then we are lost. Today, if it hadn't been for the severity that we learned from Moses, we would not have our laws. We would not even have, we'd not even be a people any longer. But it is the, the excessive tolerance, the lack of rigidity in your teaching that has made us feel that this is a real danger. For God gives me security. It's a guide to my whole way of life. A uh, measure for judging this man is right and this man is wrong. And you should not judge. But you, as a son of Israel, know that we were chosen by God from all mankind to be the holy nation. And for this, he gave us our law, the Torah, which is the law of life. And we have to separate ourselves from the sinners and be pure. And just. But who is just in the eyes of the Lord? What is the heart of the law? 
Hear, O Israel, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength. This is the greatest commandment. You said well. You are not far from the kingdom of God, Joseph of Arimathea. But there is another commandment, no less great. You must love your neighbor as yourself. But who is my neighbor? No! 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 Stop her! No! You can't come in! This is no place for the likes of you! What's the matter? Is it? See that woman? Yes, yes, that yes. What is she doing? She's defiling him. This is no place for you, woman. Come, leave quickly. Simon, sit down. But Rabbi, you know what kind of a woman this is. Simon, please. Simon, when I came into your house, you didn't pour water over my feet or kiss me in greeting or anoint my head with oil. She has washed my feet with her tears and dried them with her hair and anointed them. Daughter, your sins, and I know they are many, are forgiven you because of the greatness of your love. Only God can forgive sins, no man. Daughter, take this ointment and keep it for my burial. Go in peace. with you except a staff. No pack, no food, no money. Whenever you come to a town or village, find who is worthy in it and stay with him. And if at any place they will not receive you or listen to you, shake the dust off your feet as you leave. Sodom and Gomorrah on the Day of Judgment will fare better than that place. I'm sending you out as sheep amongst wolves. Be as wise as serpents and as harmless as doves. Don't be anxious about what you are to say. 
how you are to speak. It's not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Freely you have received, now freely give. Blessed are you among women. You are his mother. Anyone who obeys our Father in heaven is his brother, his sister, his mother. Take this. The king is coming. Here comes Herod. We're preaching in the town. Huh? Your Majesty, Jesus himself has no interest in the zealots. Hey, well, he may not, but the zealots still make use of him. They made use of John the Baptist, too. And he is more dangerous now than when he was alive. Watch your tongue. Huh? Hey, what you do? Don't stand there gaping like idiots! Out, 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 out! Have no mercy on those zealots! Kill them all! Carry out the orders! Back up! Come on, you zealot scum! Come on! You sold your soul to Herod! Herod! God's curse on you! All right! Tie it up tight! You butcher us, Herod, and out of our blood, thousands will rise to take our place. In the name of the king, kill them! And this is how they all end up, all who plot against the king. Poor Amos. To die like that. How good and strong he was, really. Don't grieve, Simon. You warned them what would happen, remember? They were my brothers, Judas. 
I lived with them since I was a boy. Oh, I know they were mad, I know. But they were honest. They thought they could force God's hand. Exactly. Now, Jesus will go to Jerusalem. And we'll deal with the Sanhedrin on his terms. And there will be no need for a bloodbath. Come. Come, let us find the master. Come. about you. Yeah. Who do the people in Galilee say that I am? Some say John the Baptist. They will not believe that he's dead. They know that he's dead, many indeed. But they say you're John the Baptist alive again. Yes, yes. I heard one say that you are Elijah, back from the grave. <laughs> <laughs> and some say Jeremiah or Ezekiel. <laughs> yeah. And who do you say that I am? The Messiah. The Son of the Living God. In saying that, Simon Barjona, You show yourself to be blessed among men. Flesh and blood have not revealed this truth to you. It has come from my Father in heaven. And so now I will call you Peter. The Rock. On this rock I will build what I must call my church. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. To you I give the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And to you all, I say this. Peter has spoken the truth. And now you know it. But you must not reveal it to any man. The time has not yet come. But another time is coming. time for me to go to Jerusalem. Oh, yes, Master. You must go to Jerusalem. The whole city awaits you. The elders of Israel must know and recognize you. No, Judas. In Jerusalem, the Son of Man will be rejected by the elders and the chief priests of the temple. 
he will be condemned. He will be handed over to the unbelievers who will scourge him, mock him, put him to death. Then, after three days, he will rise again. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for what is right, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted in the cause of right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people abuse you and persecute you and speak all kinds of calumny against you for my sake. Rejoice and be glad for your reward will be great in heaven as it was for the prophets persecuted before you. In your prayers, remember your Father knows what your needs are before you ask Him. This is how you should pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. but deliver us from evil.
Buster. Master, you said you were going to Jerusalem. And in Jerusalem, they would kill you. If that's true, then it's our duty to keep you from going. You must not allow it to happen. as men think, not as God thinks. The devil is speaking through you. Get him behind me, Satan. One more halt, and we'll be nearly there. Jerusalem will be swarming with pilgrims getting ready for the Passover. Will he go straight to the city? He said he would be put to death there. 
and that he would rise again. Master! Master! Martha and Mary, the sisters of your friend in Bethany, have sent me here to find you. Lazarus is very ill, near death. Go. Tell them I'll be there. Even now, whatever you ask of God, God will give it to you. Because I believe you are the Christ, the Son of God, He who has come into the world to give us eternal life. Where have you laid him? Come and see. Lord, Lord, I prayed and prayed for you to arrive. You could have kept Lazarus from dying. Take away the stone. But he's been dead four days, Master. His body must already be decaying. Take away the stone. Those who stand round me may believe that I am the resurrection and the life. And those who believe in me shall never die. I went down into the countries underneath the earth to the peoples of the past but you lifted my life from the pit Lord my God Lazarus come forth
he that believes in me. But he were dead. Yet shall he live. extremely flattered that you should wish to see me, but why, may I ask? Oh, Master Zera, with respect, there are many people in Israel who feel that your influence in the Sanhedrin offers great hope for the future. And I can think of no better introduction to the high priest, Lord Caiaphas. Well, since you know so much about me, then you won't be surprised that we know about your rabbi from Nazareth. Miracles. Raising the dead. Extraordinary. Now, I wish that my duties had given me time to see your Jesus myself. I wish you had, then you would need no persuading that he is the only man that can bring peace to Israel. What? Oh, the zealots know it, and so... So you might be surprised to learn to your temple guards. Romans, they're painfully practical. They would welcome anybody that would bring peace to this country. And if it was a peace that cost them nothing, so much the better. The Sanhedrin should proclaim Jesus king of Judea and tell the Romans what? L look, Caesar, we have a new ruler. One from the royal house of David. One in whom we have every confidence, who preaches peace, tolerance and love, even to you Romans. Therefore, you can calmly withdraw your troops. We no longer need them. She put it very well. I would have to put it very well indeed for the Romans to take away their troops and their procurator, not to mention the tax collectors. I was told of your wit, but this is hardly the time for it. All right. <laughs> you and I should not quarrel. What do you want me to do? Let Jesus of Nazareth prove himself before the Sanhedrin. I think I can promise you that he shall have that opportunity. Rabbi, we have traveled many days to see you. Good bless you, 
Jesus, you have saved me! Welcome to our city! Oh, Jesus! He raised Lazarus from the dead! Who is this Jesus of Nazareth? He's a prophet. A great prophet. A prophet? On a donkey? <laughs> Blessings for the healing of the sick! You have come to deliver us! Jesus of Nazareth, bring us the truth! Isaiah said, Jerusalem, daughter of Zion, behold thy king cometh unto thee, humble and meek. You are the hope of Israel! You are our prophet and our saviour! Jesus the prophet, save us! Bless us, Master! Heal me, Master! Heal me! You know that. Oh, then it's cheap. But if you don't like it, I'll show you another problem. We're turning the house of our Lord into a marketplace. It's a shame. Pick them up. Okay. Get the same rate as all the other stores, my friend. It comes to ten shekels and a half. Take two instead of one. The Lord will be grateful. Two fine lambs. Two fine lambs. I did this trick to read it. Money and preach somewhere else. Jerusalem, the faithful city, she that was full of justice, has become a harlot. Stop me! I do not know! I do not know! Has it not been told Stop you from the stand. beginning? What are your multitude of sacrifices to me, says the Lord, that the bring forth no more offerings? Rabbi, my name is Zera. I'm a scribe of this holy place. And I, like my brethren, have followed your mission with great interest. We have heard good things of you and are glad. But what you have done here today both shocks and surprises us. Do you wish to destroy the sacred temple? The temple is not mere stone. It is the house of God. 
cannot be destroyed as long as God lives here. Destroy this temple. And in three days I will make it rise again. It took centuries to build this temple. Do you think you can rebuild it in three days? You have said it. But you have not understood. Rabbi, I understand better than you think. scribe had every intention of greeting you in a friendly manner. He wanted to understand your mission. Was it wise to discourage him? He has one of the most open minds in the Sanhedrin. Open your heart, Judas. Not your mind. Open your eyes and your heart. Master Zerah! Master Zerah! Oh. My dear Judas, you're quite right. Your master has very little political sense. But he is an extraordinary man. And we shall continue to watch his mission with great interest. Sam will be teaching in the temple. Shall I take you to him? No. I'll wait. I'll see him when it is time. Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you, many kings and prophets have desired to see what you see and have not seen it. To hear what you hear and have not heard it. I thank you, Father, for hiding these things from the learned and the wise and revealing them to the innocent and the simple. For he who would be great among you must be your servant. He who would be the first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come, O oh blessed of my Father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, 
and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was a prisoner, and you visited me. I was sick, and you came to me. You will ask, when? Did we do this for you? Whoever does this to the least of my brethren, he does it to me. Barabbas, a zealot. Before he was murdered, Amos sent word to us, he said, to, to trust you. My brothers are ready. Some of them are temple guards. Our day of revenge against the Romans has come. Every day their grip becomes tighter. Our people have grown used to oppression. But with you to lead them, and with our swords behind you, they will rise up. We can teach them to fight. Some of the priests and Sadducees have said, Obey the laws of Caesar. They do not speak for the Jewish people. Tell us what to do. Whatever you say will follow you. Then love your enemies and forgive those who use and persecute you. The day of forgiveness is at hand. Forgive Herod? Forgive the Romans? Forgive them all. But the, the Romans have butchered hundreds of innocent people, young people, old people, lives ended without mercy, without trial. Surely you, you, you can't mean to forgive that, Master. We must meet the sword with the sword. All who take up the sword shall perish by the sword. But we must end the voice of weeping in Israel. But Barabbas, your zeal blinds you to the truth. The new Jerusalem will not be built by murder and uprisings. The wisdom of God will fill the land as water fills the sea. The lion will lie down with the lamb. There'll be no more killing or destroying. And the voice of weeping shall be heard no more. While we wait for that day to come, our people live in mourning and lamentation. Barabbas, you wish to follow me. 
have come to take on my shoulders the sins of the world. He who would follow me must do the same. Oh, no. Barabbas. children use those words. You know it is blasphemy. And you are responsible for it. Have you never read the Psalms? Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise. By what authority do you do these things? Before I answer, I will ask you a question. From where did John the Baptist receive authority to baptize? From heaven or from men? We don't know. We, we can't tell. Very well. You tell me nothing. Nor will I tell you by what authority I do these things. <coughs> but I will tell you a story. Oh. <laughs> there once was a man, and he had two sons. And to the first son, one day, he said, go and work in the vineyard. And the son said, no. But afterwards, he thought better of it, and he went. Now the man said exactly the same thing to his second son, who said, certainly. But he didn't go. Now, which of the two boys did his father's will? First. The second. The second. Yes, the first. <laughs> and what is the meaning of this story? That there are those who think they are righteous because they say yes to God. But they do not do his will. John the Baptist came to you in righteousness, but you didn't believe him. Even when you saw that there were sinners who believed and repented, they will get into the kingdom of heaven before you do. your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. Pray for those who persecute you. If you love only those who love you, why should you claim any credit? Even the tax collectors do as much. If anyone strikes you on the right cheek, 
Offer the other also. And if anyone takes away your coat, give him your cloak as well. Give to everyone who asks from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them back. Do not do to others anything you would not have them do to you. Pass no judgment, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Be perfect, just as our Father in Heaven is perfect. Ask for this gift, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened. What father refuses his child? If you who are imperfect know how to give what is good to your children, how much more will your Father in Heaven give to those who ask Him? What happened? Wicked adulterers! Oh, oh, he's a sinner! Ten flesh more! Shame on your husband! Take the husband the slut! Clear! Stone her! She must be judged and sent What is this? She's a sinner! An adulteress! She's got to be punished according to the law! Take her to the master! <laughs> master! Yes, master! Shame on you! Stop me! Stop me! Stop me! Stop me! Stop me! Stop me! Stone her! Stone her! Master, what should we do? This woman has been caught in the act of adultery. She should be punished according to the law. What do you say? Answer, Master. We want to know your opinion. Yes, tell us. Is it right to kill her? He among you who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. Where are your accusers? Is there anyone here who's condemned you? Uh, no. No one. Then neither do I condemn you. Uh, Go. And sin no more.
Jackson. The servants went out and invited everybody they met. A Roman Both here? Dead. Is he a centurion? So the wedding hall was full of people. I'm sorry if I disturbed you, Rabbi, but I would like to ask you a great favor. I have a servant in my house. I've had him a long while, and he's good, loving, more like a son than a servant. He's very sick, dying, I fear. Rabbi, in all humility... You would like me to come to your house? Very well. I will come with you. No, I am unworthy that you should enter under my roof. I know that if, if you say the word, my servant will be healed. I am a man under authority, but I myself have authority over a hundred soldiers, and if I say to one of them, do this, I know that he will do it. And if I say to another, go there, I know that he will go. I need not see, I know. So it is enough that you give the word, and it will be done. Do you hear this man? I have seldom found such faith among the people of Israel. Go home. Your faith has cured your servant. So he's a friend of the Romans. Your orders are changed. But we know we are the chosen people. How can a pagan be worthier than a son of Israel? Everybody, everybody is welcome at my father's table. Rich, poor, masters, servants, Children of Abraham and the pagans. Theseus, 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 Theseus! Come home, it's all right. Marcus is well, your servant is cured. What? Come on. Come on, come and see for yourself. It's all right. My eyes, it's cured. Come on. Theseus. Come, on. Theseus. Come, on. Theseus. come to your house. <laughs> Our God is the God of our fathers, our King and the King of our fathers, our Saviour and the Saviour of our fathers, our Creator and the Rock of our salvation, our help and our believer. Thy name is forever. And as God beside thee, those that were saved, sang a new song to be named by the sea shortly. Together they praise thee for the name of the Lord, shall be forever and ever. Blessed be the Lord who saves us. For it is as thou art the Lord our God and the God of our fathers. Intervene? No. At least not for the moment. I must confess that I'm fascinated by this man's power over the peoples. We must find out where this power comes from. Well, we must admit he's capable of extraordinary things. They say he raised one of his friends from the tomb. A clever trick before coming to Jerusalem. Yes, but you must admit... Please, brothers, be advised. We must not act impetuously. Eliphaz, ask the captain of the temple guard to report to the high priest Caiaphas. Immediately. Arms give to the poor blind man. May he, may the law give you happiness. God give you good health. No, Give to the blind. Please. I was born blind. For my parents' sin. What can I give you? When you give, will you take this and pray for us? May the Lord give you happiness, help, 
I was born blind. Please, help for the poor blind man. Please. If he could see, no one would give him anything. Leave me alone. Don't touch me. Don't touch me, I say. Master, that man was born blind. He's accepted his life the way it is. Why then change it? He lives in darkness. And as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. No, oh, don't leave my eyes alone. I don't want you to touch them. No, don't touch my eyes. Oh, ah! You are hurting me! They're burning! What have you done to them? What have you put on them? Uh, Go and wash his eyes. Come on, let's take him to the uh, Come on! Wait, wait, wait! wait. wait. Oh, oh, uh, what's happening? Come with us and see. The master oh, has killed a blind man! Uh, uh, and he see? Uh, don't know yet! Uh, Give him a good walk! Oh, 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 <laughs> he hasn't touched water all his life! <laughs> Throw him in! Give him a good walk! to say about the man who healed you he's a prophet there is no doubt what are you saying you got your sight back from god not from that man he's a sinner i i don't know i don't know whether he's a sinner or not i only know one thing i was blind i was blind before and now i can see <laughs> it's a miracle I, I must go to this man i must thank him for what he has done for me <laughs> Where is it? Where is it? Master, 
that I may believe in him. You're seeing him. It is he that is speaking to you. I believe. Lord. Make way! Make way there! Make way! The priest is coming! Out of the way! Clear the way! The priest is here! Is here. This lying cheat was never blind. What? We of the temple lying. know that he only pretended to be blind in order to earn his living. He's it? right. He's a liar. I've known a long time. He's never been blind. And what's your story? That you can give sight to the blind? I came into this world to give sight to those who cannot see. And to take away sight from those who can. What do you mean by that? That we who are righteous are blind? If you were blind, you would be without sin. But since you say we see, your sin remains. That's true! This man walks through the devil! and Pharisees, hypocrites all, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. You do not go in yourselves, nor do you let others enter. Blind guides, you strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. You bow before the letter of the law and violate the heart of the law. Justice. Mercy! Good faith! You are like whited sepulchres, all clean and fair without, but within, full of dead men's bones and all corruption. You see these stones, do you not? I tell you, there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. Yours? is a house of desolation, the home of the lizard and the spider. Serpents, brood of vipers, how can any of you escape damnation? You shall not see me here again, not until you learn to cry. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. For I and my father are one and the same. He is a blasphemer. This is the man. White dead sepulchres. You have forsaken the Lord. And now you despise the Holy One of Israel. You don't speak for the people of Israel. Listen to the teachings of our God. Remember the coming What's going on? I don't like it. I'll take a look. Look up, you standard. All right. Oh, no! 
Peter. If you please, I've come to offer my help. Master Nicodemus. Yes, I must advise you. You are in danger. Please persuade your master to keep away from public places. God must have sent you, Master Nicodemus. You speak to him. Of all people, he will listen to you. Come. Master? of the Sanhedrin. You have many enemies there, but also friends who know that you are a teacher come from God. For no man could show the signs or have the words that you impart unless God were with him. But yet, my heart is troubled and my mind confused. You must help me see the truth. Except a man be born again, Nicodemus. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Born again? Can a man enter his mother's womb the second time? That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it will. And you hear the sound of it. But you don't know whence it comes or whither it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. God so loved the world that he sent his own son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have eternal life. God sent his son into the world not to condemn it, but that the world may be saved through him. from the courtyard of the temple and we did not intervene. Yeah. How many times have we protested at the disgrace of money changers being allowed in the precincts of the temple? But then we allowed him to preach in the holy temple itself yeah. and no time, at no time did he recognize your authority, Caiaphas, nor made submission to the elders of Israel. Denounce him in the name of the people of Israel. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that we have that right. Can we honestly say that we represent the true thoughts and aspirations of the people of Israel? What are you saying? I've often wondered if, as elders, we're not too cut off from them and from their real problems. How can we guide them if we don't know what's in their hearts? But without our guidance, they would be lost. The people, people will run after any new thing. Well, they've taken up with this man, Jesus, with his tricks and exaggerated promises. I have seen him. I've heard him preach. His words reach into men's hearts, not like ours. It's not the old ritual, the old formulas, but a new vision which seems to answer all their hopes. A message of comfort, of goodness, of purity, of the virtues of humility. We've heard it all before, from John the Baptist and hundreds of others. And why not? Hmm? That is the richness of our religion, that it's always being kept alive by new ideas. Oh, that kind of thinking encourages false prophets. What an incredible people we are. Thirsty for knowledge, but hypocrites afraid of change. We say 
that we want new ideas so our religion will speak to each generation. And yet, when a prophet appears, burning with faith and fiery revelations, we stifle him. Shall we go down to history as a people who destroys its prophets? Oh, yes, no, no, exactly. please, no, brothers, please. Look, this is scarcely the time for philosophical uh, discussions. There are more urgent problems to be considered. He allows those who follow him to hail him as the Messiah. He's a blasphemer! He's an imposter! With respect to those more learned than I, there is one possibility that uh, it seems no one here is ready to consider. What is it? The possibility that Jesus of Nazareth may be, in fact, the Messiah awaited by our people. A carpenter from Galilee. This man has studied the prophecies and carefully and subtly he never misses a chance to identify himself with them. Exactly. I only know uh, that like our brother Joseph, I've heard him preach. I was moved, lifted out of myself, and seemed to see all things in a new and blinding light. I was aware of wonders, signs that God may be with him, and through him, with us. Realize what you are saying, Master Nicodemus. Let him speak. Listen to him. Let him speak. Don't shut him down. The coming of the Messiah is the heart of our faith. Why should he not come now? Why do we dream our liberator will be revealed in glory, a new Solomon, new David? Is God not allowed to choose whom he wishes? Even the son of a poor carpenter from Nazareth? And David began life as a shepherd. Who are we to decide the way in which God should choose to help his people? We, grains of sand, chaff blown in the wind. May the Lord open our eyes to his wisdom. Master Nicodemus, I have always respected you. How am I to understand your defense of this man? whose mission seems to be to divide our people. Even this noble assembly has been torn asunder by him. This Jesus of Nazareth must be an extraordinary man. But is there not one among you who understands the, the real significance of this matter? It is not the Galileans' words that are important or the so-called miracles, even the fact that frenzied crowds hail him as the Messiah, it's, it's not important. The central core of this case is that this man dares to proclaim, and I can hardly make myself say it, this man dares to proclaim himself the, the Son of God. Master Nicodemus, in your uh, great faith and wisdom, and you, Joseph, most honest of men, can you tell us that in your heart of hearts you believe he is the Son of God, that he is equal to God? If he is not the Son of God, then who is this Jesus of Nazareth? Is he a prophet? Only a false prophet can assume the powers of God 
and say to persistent sinner, you are forgiven. Only God can forgive sins. All through our history, false prophets have been the plague of Israel. Yes. This man, while claiming to uphold the law, perverts our most fundamental beliefs. The Romans will not wait for us to find the answer. Our law says the prophet who claims to say in the name of God things which God has not commanded, that prophet must die. But if this man Jesus is a false prophet and a blasphemer, is it not better for one man to die than for a whole nation to perish? However, under Roman occupation, Caiaphas, the people of Israel may put a goat to death, but not a man. Thank you, Zira, for reminding us of our realities. Then he must be charged and found guilty by the Romans. But Caiaphas, we have not found him guilty yet. Surely our law does not condemn a man before first giving him a hearing before the elders of Israel? No matter how serious his offense, we cannot simply hand over one of our brothers to the Romans. Caiaphas, after the Passover, let me persuade Jesus to come to us and explain to us what is in his heart and his mind when he says he is the Son of God. Brethren, I agree. We will question him fully and give this Jesus of Nazareth every opportunity to, to defend himself. No! To delay would be too dangerous. We all know what steps Pilate would take against our people if the unrest continues. Zara, he must be taken tonight. It could cause even more trouble among the crowds if our temple guards go searching for him. It could be a long search. All over the city. No one knows where he and his followers are hiding. They stay no longer than one night in the same place. I think I know the way to reach him. Zira, don't forget. Jesus of Nazareth is one of our brothers. Blessed be thou, Lord our God, who has blessed us with thy laws and made bread to issue from the earth. From now on, this will no longer be the bread of the passage of our fathers from bondage to freedom. This Passover is for you today. The passage from the bondage of death to the freedom of life. This is the bread of life. Whoever eats of this bread shall have eternal life.
this is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. sacrament of the covenant God made with our fathers on Mount Sinai. This is my blood. The blood of the new covenant which is to be poured out for me. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for a friend. And if you love one another, all men shall know that you are my disciples. Son, that thy son may glorify thee. Keep in thy name those thou hast given. I do not pray for these only, but also for those who believe in me through their word. Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Let it be. 
as you. Not I would have it. This is your hour, Judas. The hour of shadows. Oh, master. You betray your master with a kiss. is by speaking to the Sanhedrin. Take him away. Leave him alone! Oh, Let go! Leave him alone! Kill him! Oh, Jesus! Andrew! Stop! Jesus! No, Peter! Get away, you scum! Arrest them all! Peter! It was me you sought. You have found me. Let them go. Take him away! Take him away! Take him away! Take him to the master! Peter, do something! Peter, do something! Lion! Chase! Let's go! No, no, we can't do anything for him! Let's go! Brothers, let us save ourselves! Philip, come on, let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Where did they take him? Where have they taken him? He's the one who brought the soldiers. Zera. Speak to Zera. I must speak to Zera. Is he in here? Did they bring him here? Who? Jesus! Master Zera, please. I don't understand this man. Zera. Zera. Yeah. Now, where is this meeting with Caiaphas? I must be there with Jesus. Meeting? There's no meeting. What? Huh? There's a trial. Your Jesus is accused of blasphemy. You've been an invaluable help to us, Judas. Come and see me when all this is over. Go 
what you wanted. So get out of here. Come on, get out of here. Move yourself. Master Joseph, we were coming to find you. This is Martha, the sister of Lazarus. And Mary, the mother of Jesus. Jesus has been arrested. Yes, I know. I've been called to a meeting of the elders. You have such great influence in the Sanhedrin. Please, will you help me? I'll try. You know that. I'll do what I can. I've never understood how that liar could have fooled so many people. <laughs> you were one of those who believed in him, didn't you? Well, I admit I believed in him, but we all believed in him. And now you discover the truth. He said a lot of things that I liked very much. Oh, what? And he did some good things. Oh, good things? They were tricks of the devil. All right, all right. We know that he was a liar and a blasphemer and he betrayed us. And now he will pay. Come on, come on. I'm sorry I had to wake you up at this hour of the night. Master Nicodemus. that he should be found like a common thief. It's most unseemly, sir. Jesus, it is not our intention to treat you as a criminal. But we want you to explain to this assembly the nature of your teachings. What is this doctrine you and your disciples are spreading through Judea? I have spoken openly for all the world to hear. I have taught in the synagogues and in the temple. I have said nothing in secret. So, why do you ask me? Ask those who heard me. They are my witnesses. Caiaphas, I've heard him preach. I, I find nothing in his doctrine which denies the basic principles of our faith. Rabbi, we fail to understand the meaning of many of your sayings. For instance, there are witnesses who say that you claim that you could destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. No one could rebuild the temple in three days. What he said must have some symbolic meaning. Come. I'm sure I heard him say he could rebuild it again in two days. Three days, four days, you hear? Witnesses can't even agree. How can we remember every detail? There was a riot which Jesus himself provoked, but for which the Romans will hold us responsible. The riot was provoked by Barabbas. The Romans don't need an excuse. We know what they have done to our people. All of us here can remember. Indication not so many years back when over a thousand of our people were nailed to the walls of Jerusalem because there were not enough scaffolds to satisfy the Romans' lust for blood. None of us, I'm sure, wants to give any more victims to Pontius Pilate than we can prevent. Of course not, Joseph. We're all agreed upon that. As Caiaphas has said, this is not a trial. We, we left our homes, we came here tonight, hoping that Jesus of Nazareth would explain to us the purpose of his mission and help to heal the divisions in our community. Brother, we have often heard that you've come to bring love and brotherhood. I beg you, bring peace to our gathering tonight. Tell me. 
It has been said that you proclaimed yourself the Son of God. I ask you now, in the name of the Eternal, are you the Messiah, the Son of God? I am. And you shall see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power of God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. We have heard enough. Let him be taken before the procurator Pontius Pilate whose hands lies the final authority for trial and judgment. to him. They're sending him to Pontius Pilate. <laughs> we know how that'll end up, don't we? Wait a minute. I know you. You were with that Jesus. What? You're one of his followers. No. no, I don't know him. But he is. Look. And I know him. He is one of his followers. Yes, I've seen him. I've seen him. No. Catch him. He's alive. He's a friend of Jesus, a disciple. Don't let him go. Oh, please. Mistaken. I know. No, this Jesus they speak of, nor have I ever heard of him. Go. Just keep quiet here. Don't you know you're on uh, sacred ground? Barabbas. Uh, the crazy people, they should be in here. Your friends outside want you set free. 
So you can carry on with your murdering, I suppose. I'm not a murderer. I shouldn't be in with those two. I'm a patriot. You're all criminals. I don't think you're any different. It was him who did the murder, not me! Now he took me into it! It was his idea! Uh, uh, when will it be? When Pontius Pilate comes from Caesarea for the Passover, or whatever they call it. Hey, listen. You've got to let me out of here. Well, I didn't do anything. Listen to me! Welcome! I leave for one week and I come back and I find the mobs clamoring in the street and you dare to say to me, Welcome! Who's this Barabbas they've been shouting about? He's a zealot we arrested. His followers have disturbed the crowds. I don't think their noise will disturb my judgment. Look, if you take a hundred men and you clear the street, With respect, uh, Procurator. Please, I'm so tired. Jerusalem is full of people. There are many hotheads among them. Yes, and they'll cool when they see the example we make of their Barabbas. Pontius Pilate, I'm afraid there's another case which I must trouble you. Another one? Yes, it was submitted to us by the Sanhedrin itself. It concerns a certain Galilean preacher. Quintilius, I am not interested in their preachers or their prophets. You know that. Yes, of course, I know. The Sanhedrin, uh, whose uh, cooperation has been very useful to us, they consider it extremely important. Even urgent. Urgent? I'm sorry. Maybe next week. <laughs> First, we'll deal with the rubbish. Pilate, there's a delegation from the Sanhedrin waiting outside. It is led by Zera himself. They have this, uh, this preacher, this Jesus of Nazareth with them. They, they want you to judge him. Judge him? Zara himself? That must be important. No, 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 no. I don't want to get involved in their religious quarrels. Mm. This is the monthly report of the province. I think it's wise not to offend them unnecessarily. I think you should see them. What happened, brother? In? Don't stand there, bring them in. Uh, Pilot, I regret, I'm afraid we must go out to them. We must go to them? Yes, uh, according to their beliefs, uh, well, they cannot come into a house of a Roman, not on Passover. They would be defiled. <laughs> defiled. I forgot about that. All right. We'll go to them. Bring them to the Great Hall. How does one govern such people? Procurator, we have found that this man, Jesus of Nazareth, distorts our people's views on the relationship between God and the state. Furthermore, 
He perverts the very heart of our religion. I'm not concerned with people who break your religious laws. My function as governor here is to keep the peace and administer Roman justice. We know that, procurator. But this man also threatens the established order. If he were not a criminal, we would not have brought him to you. He calls himself the Christ, which means the anointed one. <laughs> Thank you. I too know some Greek. Well, what else has he done? Has he spoken against the emperor? Has he spoken against Rome? Well, procurator, not directly, no, but... Not directly, then he's your problem. You'll have to judge him according to your law. Procurator, for us, this man, Jesus, is a blasphemer. If we were a self-governing nation, we would have the right to exact punishment, which under the law of Moses is laid down for blasphemy. He made a triumphal entry into Jerusalem, calling himself the King of the Jews. A claim which we totally reject. King of the Jews. Well, whatever else he may have done, such a claim is treason. True, too. All right, all right. I'll talk to him. <laughs> Your Jesus. Not ours. Then whose? Whose? Bring him in! Is this the man you think so dangerous? This? The man that aspires to be a king. Come. Come, come, come. Now. The leaders of the Sanhedrin accuse you of preaching perverted doctrine. They also say you call yourself the king of the Jews. Well, are you king of the Jews? If my kingdom were of this world, my followers would have fought to prevent me from being captured. Oh, you speak of a kingdom. Therefore, you must be a king. Are you a king? I am. I was born for one purpose. To bear witness to the truth. All who can accept the truth hear my voice. And what? is the truth. <laughs> no, this man's no criminal. He's a dreamer. Take him away, take him away. Have him flogged as a token of Roman justice. That should wake him up. Right, sir. Procurator. We, <coughs> the leaders of the Sanhedrin, have always had the same aim as you. The peaceful administration of our country for the good of our people. And for many oh, years... please, 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 please. Don't talk to me about the people. As long as they obey, we care as much about your children of Israel as we do the mob in Rome. Hmm. No, Sarah. Let me 
let us speak directly. Why does the Sanhedrin consider this man so dangerous that they send you yourself here to make sure that he's condemned? Perhaps for the same reasons as you, Procurator, if you knew him as well as we do, would also find him dangerous. back up. Behold the man. Well, what have you got to say for yourself now? Speak!
punctilious. Isn't there an ancient custom honoring Passover where the procurator can release a prisoner sentenced to death as an act of mercy? Yes, that custom still exists. And we have two prisoners? Barabbas? And Jesus. So let the people decide. I've made my decision. The people will decide. Take him away. Right, take this one away. Get down to the prison now and bring Barabbas. No, you must save Jesus. He's a righteous man. When did they arrest him? Late last night. In the garden of Gethsemane. Gethsemane? That's near where I live. We must be prepared. Barabbas must be free at all cost. Now look, we put our men all over. Do you understand? At a given sign. We could understand what he wanted when he's at the temple. and his benevolence, our divine emperor has decided that the custom of releasing one prisoner sentenced to death in honor of your Passover shall continue. We have two prisoners. One, Jesus of Nazareth, accused of treason by proclaiming himself king of the Jews. Do you work a miracle now, Jesus? <laughs> Anyone shouting for that false prophet had better watch out. Look at him, the king of the Jews. What's happened to him? Call yourself a king? Oh! oh. Barabbas, accused of sedition and murdering a Roman auxiliary. Give him his freedom! And that's the man they call the Son of God? <laughs> Barabbas! He's Barabbas! Free Barabbas! He's one of us! Give us Barabbas! Why don't you free yourself, Jesus? Which of the two shall be released to you? Jesus of Nazareth. We cannot let this happen. We must do Guilty something. of proclaiming himself king of the Jews. No, beware the crowd. Oh. Barabbas. Barabbas. Release Jesus. He is the true prophet.
Go slap it! Go. We can't let Barabbas get away. Yes. The soldiers won't like Wait. that. The pilot, you're not going to free Barabbas. An assassin, an enemy of Rome. I wonder who is the real enemy. To be crucified. Release now!
Jones! Those are the orders we received! Take down that sign! Get out of the way! Get him! Get him! him. You have the right to do it! Now, all of you, stay back! Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. If you're what you say you are, if you're the Messiah, why don't you save yourself? <laughs> I'm not. Leave him alone. Don't you fear God, even when you are dying? We deserve to die, for we are receiving the just punishment for our crimes. But this man has done nothing wrong. Jesus. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Today, you will be with me in paradise. His mother. Well, how can you prove it? Hey. She is his mother. Go, dear. And who are you? Please. I'm one of the family. Is that right? Yes. He is one of the family. Oh. The Romans won't let you get close. Hey! <laughs> 
John. Behold your mother. Woman. Behold your son. saved others. Why can't he save himself now? Elijah. No, he's not calling Elijah. He's quoting the scriptures. Even now, nailed to the cross, he quotes the scriptures. Even now. He was despised and rejected of men, man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearer is dumb. He hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was abused for our iniquities. And through his wounds, we are healed. Into thy hands I commit my spirit. It is
been provided by a prominent member of your faith who doesn't wish his name to be revealed. Pontius Pilate gave permission before he went back to Caesarea. Yes, yes, yes. But you don't understand why. Why should you? It is of vital importance to us to know where this tomb is. With all due respect, why is it of such importance? The man is dead. Well, since you ask, there have been rumors of this Jesus arising from the dead. Huh. You believe this? Huh. But it may prevail upon the superstitious. His followers could easily remove the body secretly, and then they can talk of having witnessed the resurrection. Huh. Therefore, can the tomb be guarded? No, there's nothing to stop you guarding it. No, there isn't, but it must be carried out by you Romans. Why? Well, if we use our own temple guards, his disciples could say that he truly rose, but that his enemies denied it. What sort of person are you, if I may ask? Huh? His death is not enough for you. I think your procurator, if he were here, would agree with me when I say... this Jesus could be much more dangerous now that he's dead. Therefore, I should be grateful if something could be arranged. Very well, then. A Roman guard will be posted. Hey! 
stop! Who are you? Where are you going? We are the family of Jesus of Nazareth, who lies here. What do you want? To enter the tomb. Why? To anoint the body. To bring fresh linen, herbs, spices. It is our custom. Why didn't you do that when you brought him here? The Sabbath began. We could not buy them. What do you think? Now, there are only three women. Let them go. I suppose it'll be all right, then. You'll need an army to move that stone. All right, then. Let's go together. But we'll need some help. Hey, Lentulus, wake up! Come with us! Marcus, you watch the bridge. I think we should call those priests, too. Are they still around? Where are you going? Why do you seek the living among the dead? Jesus is not there. Where by Jupiter yes, and Hercules yes, Mars. Yes, you've been awake all night and haven't moved from the spot. That's right. You were given strict orders. Nobody's been near that tomb. And those Jewish priests, or whatever they are, were with us all the time. Well then, who moved the stone? Who is it? Me, Philip. Did anyone follow you? No. Are you sure? Of course, I'm sure. Are they still looking for us? On every corner, one sees temple guards and Roman soldiers. This place isn't safe anymore. We must go somewhere else. But where can we go? I wish we could go to Galilee. Peter. Peter. Tell us. What should we do? We must do what the Master would have wanted. The master's dead, Peter. I thought you said you weren't followed. I wasn't. Mary. Peter. All of you. I have seen him. Seen who? The master. You've seen him? Yes. He is risen. I saw him. I saw him. This morning, we went to the tomb. And near the tomb was a man. And a young boy. And the man said to me, why do you look for the living among the dead? Jesus is not here. So we went to the tomb and we saw the stone was upturned. The grave. The tomb was open. We looked for him. He was not there. You mean 
the master's body wasn't there. Has it been stolen? No, no, no. Let me finish. When we were leaving the cemetery, I saw another man. He saw how distraught we were. He said, woman, why do you weep? And then he said my name. Mary. And it was then that I saw. It was Jesus. I fell to my knees and I reached for him. Touch me not. For I have not yet ascended to my father, he said. But go to my brothers and tell them. believe me. You don't believe me. I tell you, I saw him. It was our Lord. Mary, Mary. John. Oh, John. You don't believe me. You. Mary. You're tired. Please. Please go. I saw him, John. I saw him. Women's fantasies. Fantasies? Was his death a fantasy? I saw him die. I was there and I wept at his feet. Why should he not then appear to me? He is risen. He told me to tell you. And I have done so. You wouldn't believe her. Even when the master raised Jairus' daughter, you didn't believe it. What do you mean? You believe her story. Well, do any of you believe it? Do you, Andrew? Do you, James? And you, Matthew? You, Peter. Yes. How can you? Because he said so. Because he wanted it to be so. He wanted everything to happen. You denied him. You denied him three times. Yes! I denied him because I was a coward. We are all cowards. We accused Judas of being a traitor, but we all betrayed him. We all abandoned him. At least our brothers in the Sanhedrin who condemned him didn't know him. The Romans. They did not know him. But we. We ate with him. We lived with him. We knew he was the Christ. And still we betrayed him. 
brothers, don't you? Can't you see? You ask me if I believe he's risen. Yes, I do. For I know in my heart he will not abandon us. I know in my heart he has forgiven me. given all of us. This is precisely what I feared. His disciples must have come in the night, removed the stone and taken away the body. Possible. I had guards here as you requested. And your priests were here too. written, the Son of Man will suffer, and on the third day will rise again from the dead to enter his glory. You are my witnesses to this. Now my Father in heaven is reconciled to the world. as he sent me, so I am sending you. Receive the Holy Spirit. Go like lambs among wolves. Make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teach them the gospel and the commandments I gave you. Now, I am leaving the world again and going to the Father. Stay with us. For the night is falling. And the day is almost over. Don't be afraid. I am with you every day. Till the end. 